Hello world, and welcome to the Europe in Ruins new player video tutorial. I am your host, Illegal Carrot, community manager and developer for the Europe in Ruins mod, and today we will be covering everything that a new player needs to know to get started with Europe in Ruins, from downloading and installing the mod, creating an account in a company, and finding, joining, and launching a battle. So let's get started, but first, we highly recommend that you join our official Europe in Ruins Discord server. Here, you can find news and announcements about the game, a community to interact with, players to play with, and developers to answer any questions you may have and help you with any technical issues. A link to join our Discord server can be found on our homepage, www.europeinruins.com. A link to join our Discord server can also be found in the login section of the European Ruins launcher. And of course, I'll also include a link to our Discord server down in the video description below. So with the recommendation to join our Discord server out of the way, let us begin with step one of downloading and installing the mod. So here we have the European Ruins Steam store page where you can find a link to download and install our mod. To begin the process, click install now. Steam will, of course, ask you where you would like to install Europe in Ruins. Please note and keep in mind that Europe in Ruins is a game modification for Company of Heroes and thus requires a functioning copy of Company of Heroes new Steam version to be installed. To properly install Europe in Ruins, make sure you have the same drive selected as you used to install Company of Heroes. In my case, that is the E drive here. When you have the correct drive selected, click Next and then Europe in Ruins will download and install just like any other game on Steam. Here we have the Company of Heroes relaunch folder that was used to install Company of Heroes new Steam version. Under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Company of Heroes relaunch. Here you can see the Europe in Ruins files, so we know that Europe in Ruins was installed to the correct location. Now we are ready to launch Europe in Ruins. Logging into the launcher will then take you to the Company Selection page, where you can log in to an existing company or create a new one. Once you've created a new company, you can select it by pressing the plus button next to your Steam name. New companies will be asked to select a faction and a doctrine. Go through and find the doctrine of your choosing. Once you've selected your faction and doctrine that you would like to create, press the enter button. New companies will be asked if they would like to get started by using a pre-built template. It is highly recommended that new players use this pre-built template that will come with pre-selected doctrine selections and a pre-built company. On the template selection page, you can choose which template to start with and press enter. This will take you back to the company selection page where you can log in with any of your companies. When you first log in with a company, you will be taken to the news tab, which contains a bit of information and useful links for players including the link to our official Discord server and the excellently written player manual. The first thing any company will need to do is to select its Doctrine Specializations. If you used a pre-built template company, Doctrine Selections will already have been made for you to build your company, though you can change these at any time. To choose a Doctrine Specialization or a Doctrine Unlock, left-click on it and press Accept Changes. To deselect a Doctrine Unlock, right-click on it and when prompted, press Accept Changes. You can select or deselect Doctrine Selections at any time, an unlimited number of times. You have nine total Doctrine Unlock points that you can use to customize your company, and there are a total of 21 Doctrine Specializations and Unlocks that you can choose from, making for a total of over 100 billion different potential combinations per Doctrine. So get to mixing, matching, and experimenting. The next thing we'll need to do is to take a look at the company screen and build our company. Again, if you chose a pre-built template company when creating your company, these units will already be purchased and your company will be built automatically. As with Doctrine Specializations, you can change your company around as much as you'd like. On the top left of the company page, you will have a listing of the remaining resources available to you for which to build your company. Every unit costs manpower and some cost fuel and munitions. To purchase a unit into your company, simply select it from the unit roster and drag it into one of your platoon slots. Upgrades can also be purchased on your units. To do so, simply select a unit from your company and left click on the upgrades that you would like to purchase. 
your company can be organized into six different sections for your convenience. Core, Specialist, Infantry, Tank, Anti-Tank, and Support. This is entirely for organizational purposes. You can see each tab has eight different platoon boxes for you to place units into. And platoon boxes have a maximum population capacity of 25. Every unit has population that it costs that you need to keep in mind when building your company and calling units onto the field. Every player starts with a population cap of 25 when a game begins, and as the game commences and players capture territory, that population cap will increase to a maximum of 40. Because of that, it is generally recommended that players start with a solid 25 population starting call-in, and then they have smaller population call-ins to call in troops as necessary as the game goes on. In this top section here, each company's total wins, losses, and total population cap is tracked. Just below this, off-map abilities may be purchased if they have been selected and unlocked from the doctrine screen. Below that, we have the holding zone, where units can be held between battles. They will not cost resources, and they will not take up any population while in the holding zone. This is useful for keeping veteran units safe and retaining veteran units if you wish to experiment with a new build. If you wish to delete a unit, simply left click on it and drag it to the retire unit section. It is recommended that you attempt to spend as many of your resources as possible to maximize your company's effectiveness. When you are satisfied with your company build and wish to save your company, press accept changes. If you like your company build and wish to save it to rebuild your company after a battle, press the Save Template button. If you have made changes to your company or lost units in a battle and wish to rebuild your company quickly, simply press the Load Template button and it will load the last saved template. Once you've loaded a template, press Accept Changes. So with that taken care of, all that's left is joining and launching a battle. Here we have the Battle tab where you can view and join games and chat with other players online. To create a battle, click the Create Battle button. You can switch between different game sizes. To join a battle, simply find a battle in the Battle Browser and click Join Battle. Once you've joined a battle and you're ready to play, you can press the yellow Ready for Supplies button. This will let players know that you're locked in and ready to start. After every player has readied up for supplies, the Ready to Launch button will light up and become clickable. Clicking the Ready to Launch button will lock you in and create a battle file for the game. After every player has pressed Ready to Launch, the Launch button will light up and become clickable. Clicking the Launch button will launch the Europe and Ruins version of the game client. Once the Europe and Ruins client is launched, you can join or create a battle from the multiplayer tab just like you can in Company of Heroes. You can create or join a game lobby from this screen. Once here, make sure you've selected the correct army and ready up like Company of Heroes. A game of Europe and Ruins plays a lot like a game of Company of Heroes, but with no base building, and you call in your company that you've that built from off the map. You can see the company that you've built is available for selection in the bottom right corner. The primary goal of Europe and Ruins is to capture and control territory. Your total population cap will grow over time as the game progresses, and the more territory you control, the faster your population cap will grow. Your total population growth is marked in the top. This number indicates the amount of population that you are gaining or losing per minute. Units will have various upgrades and buffs that apply to them. And there are many gameplay changes from Base Company of Heroes, including new units, new upgrades, and new abilities. Units gain veterancy that can be preserved over time, between battles. Retreating a unit will call it off the map entirely, and it will be gone for the remainder of the match. Focus on capturing territory and preserving your veteran units. Happy hunting, and enjoy Europe in ruins.